Gogeta versus Majin Buu was supposed to be a fight in Dragon Ball Z, but it was changed. And on this video, I'm going to tell you the story behind the story behind what happened to Gogeta's original inclusion in the Dragon Ball manga and what the creator Akira Toriyama wanted to do before he changed his mind. Stay tuned. This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's no secret that I'm a massive advocate for therapy and mental health. I've done it and it's helped me a ton deal with issues from my past and mold me into a better person in the present. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and help. BetterHelp.com slash Geekdom101. Answer some questions and you'll be matched up to a professional who is experienced at helping people like you and me, usually within 48 hours. You can do it all from your phone or computer via phone call, video chat, or messaging. All from the comfort of your own home. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Geekdom101 or choose Geekdom101 during sign up and enjoy a special discount on your first month. Now, let's get to the video. Back in the 90s when the Dragon Ball manga was being written by Akira Toriyama and published in Weekly Shonen Jump, it was simultaneously being adapted into the Dragon Ball and later Dragon Ball Z anime and because of that, there was communication between Toriyama and the people working on the Dragon Ball Z anime at Toei such as Kozo Morishita and Takao Koyama. But most of the time, despite what many people might think, even though there was communication, Toriyama still did his own thing for the most part. He still was writing his manga and wasn't paying as much attention to the anime side of things as people want to believe. But one of the most interesting stories about this time period is that when we got to the Majin Buu arc, Toriyama planned to have Gogeta appear in the saga and face off against Majin Buu before changes were made. If you want to follow along with me, check out Manga Chapter 469, which correlates with Dragon Ball Z Episode 240. This is where Goku first reveals that he learned the fusion pose from the Metamorans in the other world and proposes the pose to young Goten and Trunks, claiming that they have the best chance of being the newest heroes in the series and saving the Earth from Majin Buu. Remember, during this time, Goku presumed that Gohan was dead and Vegeta had just sacrificed himself shortly before this. So because Goku himself was dead, the only hope was Goten and Trunks. And because of that, Goku teaches the fusion pose to them and to Piccolo in preparation for the upcoming fight against Majin Buu. For more details on this, check out my video I did in the technique guide called Metamore and Fusion Explained. I go into more detail about how fusion works, but the power of fusion was the only hope against the seemingly invincible Majin Buu. A very important aspect of the way Toriyama wrote the story back then is that he is a discovery writer, which means that when he starts a story arc, he sort of makes it up as he goes along, but a lot of fans seem to think that Dragon Ball had no planning at all, and that's just objectively not true. Toriyama did plan some specific details and story elements throughout the series, but a lot of the in-between details is stuff that he had come up with on a weekly basis. Now you have to remember that the manga was ahead of the anime, and while the anime was being simultaneously produced alongside the manga, Toei Animation was also producing movies two Dragon Ball Z movies per year until Dragon Ball Z ended. And even though the movies were not directly written by Toriyama, they did consult with him when it comes to certain story aspects, character designs, and there was some light involvement from him in between doing manga chapters for Weekly Shonen Jump. And one of these movies was Dragon Ball Z Movie 12, known as Fukatsu no Fusion, aka Fusion Reborn, which was the first time that the world got to see Gogeta, the fusion of Goku and Vegeta. Takao Koyama and the Toei staff obviously went to Toriyama and discussed the idea of making Gogeta a movie character. Now, even though we don't have transcripts of these preliminary discussions, it's pretty safe to assume that when Toriyama introduced the concept of fusion to the series, that we were going to have Goku fuse with somebody at some point. And the two candidates that were most likely to join Goku in this fusion was Gohan and Vegeta. So there's no question to me that Toriyama wanted to have Gogeta appear in the story. And you have to keep in mind that 
when the Dragon Ball Z movies were being produced, pre-production on these films and planning was usually about three to four months ahead of time. This is usually the time when the early plans for the story and characters to be featured in said movie were put together. So Toriyama agreed to collaborate with Toei Animation and Takao Koyama on the 12th movie and that's why we see Gogeta appear in this film first. And it wouldn't be until Dragon Ball Super Broly that Toriyama would collaborate on anything involving Gogeta. But why is that? Well, when Toriyama gave the green light to include Gogeta in the 12th Dragon Ball Z movie, it changed everything. Even since I was a little kid, it was always a mystery to me as to why this show has so many different kinds of fusion. Obviously, Namekian fusion or assimilation, that's something totally different that only Namekians can do. But it's weird that in the Buu Saga, they introduced the Metamoran fusion and then later the Potara fusion. And this is precisely why it was like that. When Toriyama agreed to have Gogeta appear in the movie before appearing in the manga, the impact of seeing Gogeta in the manga would be lessened compared to if we saw him in the manga first. So when Toriyama was preparing to get to the part where Goku fights Buu, it was at this point that he came up with the Potara fusion, a stronger fusion different from Metamoran involving this magical artifact called the Potara, which I did a whole video on, Potara Fusion Explained, in the Technique Guide, so check that out to learn more about that type of fusion. With a new fusion obviously came a different way to combine the words. Gogeta is a combination of Goku and Vegeta, so that makes sense. Same thing I did with Gotenks, where it's Goten and Trunks, but what about the Potara Fusion? Well, Toriyama instead chose to go with the root word of Goku's birth name, which is Kakarato. So Vegito is Vegeta and Kakarato, Vegito. Now, if you're wondering why I'm saying Kakarato, it's because in the Japanese version of Dragon Ball and Z, both in the manga and anime, as well as the Spanish dub and other languages, Goku's birth name is actually Kakarato, not Kakarot. However, in some translations, you can remove the toe and just say Kakara, sort of like how when you say Zamasu, you can also say Zamas. A lot of times, vowels at the end of certain words can be silent, so Kakarot works for Goku, Kakarato also does, but Vegito does not make sense without saying Kakarato, which is why in the Viz translation of the manga, they call him Vegerot, which is worse than just calling him Vegito. Now, I want to say this, and please feel free to leave a comment down below about how you think a Gogeta versus Majin Buu fight would have gone. I will say, however, oh, and leave a like too. I will say, however, that I think had Gogeta not been in Fusion Reborn and had Toriyama gone with him in the original manga, it would have probably been the exact same fight as Vegito because ultimately Gogeta and Vegito are the same two characters fusing, just using different types of fusion. And I still think Gogeta would have taunted and played around with Majin Buu to get him angry, to get him absorbed, to go save the kids and Gohan and Piccolo. That would likely not have changed, but I always found it interesting that the character of Vegito would not even exist had it not been for Toei Animation pitching the 12th Dragon Ball Z movie and Toriyama giving them Gogeta in his mind, forcing him to make a different fusion. Thanks for watching.